Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at neurons and what happens when a neuron is resting and what happens when a stimulus is applied and a depolarization happens. So for the sake of this video, let's represent the cell as a box. We have the inside of the cell and we have the outside of the cell. So a resting potential is around minus 70 millivolts. So when the resting potential is occurring, there is a negative charge inside the cell. And the outside is positive, therefore indicating it has more positive ions, whereas the inside has less positive ions. At this point, as there is a difference in charge, we usually state that the membrane is polarised. So now let's look at how is this minus 70 millivolts maintained. And this is by the sodium-potassium pump. So now let's look at the sodium. So the pot sodium-potassium pump moves sodium ions in out of the neuron, but the membrane isn't permeable to sodium ions, so they can't diffuse back in. This creates a sodium ion electrochemical gradient, a concentration gradient of ions, because there is more positive sodium ions on the outside compared to the inside of the cell. Okay, so now the potassium. So the potassium, sodium potassium pump also moved the potassium ions in to the neuron, but the membrane is permeable this time to potassium ions, so they're able to diffuse back through the potassium ion channels. This makes the outside of the cell positively charged compared to the inside, as shown earlier. Okay, so one way I've learnt what the sodium potassium pump does is via the word Nokia. So the, the letters of Nokia stand for, so the N will stand for sodium, so sodium O for out, so sodium out, potassium in, and the A stands for that it uses ATP. However, now it's a bit confusing, so now how do we know whether it's three sodiums or two sodiums, vice versa? And so therefore here you just go three, two, one. You leave a space, so three sodiums, two potassiums, with the use of one ATP. Okay, so now let's look at what happens when the neuron is stimulated. Uh, this graph will appear many times throughout your studies and also might come up in the exam. So in order to analyse it, so usually when a stimulus happens, which is as shown in green, the sodium ion channels open and the membrane becomes more permeable to sodium. So sodium ions diffuse into the neuron down the sodium grade ion gradient. This makes the inside of the neurons less negative. And then depolarization occurs. So this is if the potential difference reaches around minus fifty five millivolts, more sodium ions channels open, causing more sodium ions to diffuse rapidly into the neuron. So this occurs until positive 30 millivolts, where repolarization occurs. This is where the sodium ions now close and potassium ion channels open. The membrane is now more permeable to potassium, so potassium ions diffuse out of the neuron down the potassium ion concentration gradient, and this starts to get the membrane back into its resting state at set minus 70 volt millivolts. So the little dip you see in the graph is known as hyperpolarization. This is when potassium channels are slow to close, so therefore there is a slight overshoot where there are too many potassium ions diffusing out of the neuron. This therefore causes the potential difference to become more negative than the resting potential, so therefore it drops lower than minus 70 millivolts. However, this is compensated quickly. And then the resting period is established again. So the period, another thing to note is that the period between plus 30 millivolts and to when the resting state is obtained, this is known as the refractory period. And this is a period of recovery for the neurons. This is a slight delay before the cell membrane returns to normal so that it can be excited again by another stimulus. During this time, the ion channels are recovering and cannot open. The sodium channels are closed as well as the potassium ion channels 